Hi, my name is Ryan Hoimi, aka Massage Nerd, and in this video I'm going to be instructing about chair massage. Chair massage, there's many different types of chairs, but this one we're going to be using is an Earthlight chair. So again, there's many different types of chairs, so you're, you're going to have to, they usually come with a little instructional video how to set it up, but usually not on the actual techniques. So just make sure you watch that thoroughly and actually um, test it out on your friends and relatives first before you bring it out in public because it takes a little while to adjust it to every single person's different size of their body. Okay, first with chair massage, it's usually used for um, advertising, uh, advertisements a lot. So when people um, go out in public, um, usually events, um, seminars, um, those kind of things that people are using this for. I've even seen them in parks, people use chair massage. A lot of times people actually bring these to offices. So with offices, um, sometimes you'll actually charge the, um, the client um, the money. Otherwise, uh, um, you can actually charge the, the business owner or you can just split it half and half, the client and the business owner during that time. But it's usually a lot easier if you actually have the business owner actually pay you up front. And let's say you're charging a dollar a minute, $60 for the first hour. Second one, you might want to go maybe um, $50. Uh, third one, maybe $45. And just go down from there because the longer you're there, um, it's more likely you can get a lot more money. So if you're just going for an hour, charge the full rate, plus a little bit more for drive time if you need to with chair massage. But they've done many studies on chair massage, and a lot of times people are more likely to show up on that day for work if they're uh, going to receive a free chair massage. So it can be really incentive for people to actually come in um, during those days to receive a chair massage. And they can even be used at um, the person's desk too. So as you can see they can even work a little bit if there's a computer screen. Um, sometimes you can just take this headrest away totally and just work more of the back area so they can actually still type. So it's just different um, incentives that way. Especially if they're, um, the business owner is actually paying you money to go around and massage everybody. You want to make sure that everybody enjoys chair massage as much as possible. So many times I've actually gone to businesses and even law firms. Um, sometimes they have um, uh, appreciation for employees. So that's a good way. You can actually send out a literature to um, bigger, bigger employers um, saying that if for chair massage um, that you offer it and here's my rates, but sometimes they'll actually do some kind of bidding too, so they'll actually contact other massage therapists in that region, so you can actually do that too then. With chair massage, again, it's more for advertising, but some people actually perform this for a living. I've even seen it at airports too. So, but since 9-11, there hasn't been as much uh, massage therapists at airports just because it's a little bit more strict, and you don't have as many people walking through those regions, so it's usually sectioned out. Um, for the for the chair massage. Okay, with chair massage, um, again, a lot of times people actually charge a dollar a minute. Um, that's kind of average, but um, it all depends on your region how much you're going to actually charge then. So with chair massage, you don't want to go into massaging right away. Um, everybody performs it a little bit different. Sometimes um, they, they just want five minutes. Some they, sometimes they just want ten minutes. Sometimes they want fifteen, twenty minutes. If you've even seen up to half an hour for chair massage. But you can actually, with chair, mas chair massage, you can actually have them sit the other direction too to get some of the anterior part of the body. But it's not the most comfortable, so it's a lot easier to actually have them sit in a regular chair when you're performing um, chair massage techniques on the anterior part of the body. Okay, some, a lot of times people actually show a, a certain routine, but the problem is when you show a certain routine, a lot of times it's actually hard to get out of that routine. So in this video, I'm going to explain um, a whole bunch of different techniques you can incorporate what you like to use because that's what it's all about too, is what you feel comfortable with performing. So even though I have a certain kind of routine, I'm not going to go over in depth of my routine just because I want you to be individual and that's why most massage therapists are not taught just one way. In the early 1980s, that's when um, um, Mr. Palmer actually kind of developed chair massage even though a lot of people believe um, um, chair massage has been around forever, but he actually kind of designed a chair so you can actually give um, chair massage in. And uh, a famous person that actually was a massage therapist before he was an actor, uh, Wesley Snipes, he um, actually one of the first people to actually use chair massage. So a lot of people don't know that, but um, there's even famous people that actually perform chair massage too. 
Some people actually call this more shiatsu chair massage or Japanese chair massage just because again there's clothing you have to go through it so it's hard to perform a lot of gliding techniques um, with this treatment. So you're going to have to actually compress and hold a while too. So there's many different um, kind of techniques you can incorporate into the chair massage. But just look at a lot of the techniques you incorporate on the table. Try them on the chair. You just never know if they'll actually work or not. But um, try them out anyways. So with chair massage, as you can see, she's already on the chair. But with the chair, you actually want to show them how to actually get on the chair too. So if you could please get up. So with the chair, especially if they've never seen it before, you have to actually show them how to get on there. So you're going to tell them to kind of put their knees right here because so many people I've seen actually have their legs out like this and try to sit like this so it's just not comfortable. But some people aren't able to actually sit with their knees like this. So maybe just one is fine, better than the other. But um, when I was in massage school, I actually had the incident where um, a client actually got stuck in a chair like this. So I was a little bit nervous, didn't explain everything, and she actually had her legs like this and actually fell down in here and actually had to have another person actually pull her out. So that's why make sure you actually show them how to actually get on the chair um, just to make sure. And these chairs usually hold four to 500 pounds, um, so it can definitely hold the average person then. But with, with this, there's many uh, different adjustments with it. So with the headrest, as you can see, it can go up and down and back and forth like this. But you always want to make sure that you lock it. Otherwise, if you don't, if it's not totally locked, if they're, you're going to push on it, and it'll go down then. And then you're just waiting for a lawsuit to happen then. Also, there's actually little knobs on here. You can actually bring it up or down for this whole area. So if you're going to have a taller person, you're going to actually just raise it up a little bit and then screw it in a little bit too. Another way, another device this chair has, a little lever here, as you can see, you can go back and forth. So you can almost have the client kind of in a horizontal position when they're laying down then. Another method, you can actually pull it up this whole area. So even though you can pull this area up, you can actually pull this up too. So again, make sure everything's tight before they actually get on the chair. Otherwise, again, it's not going to feel comfortable for them. Another method, you can actually just kind of pull here. So a lot of the chairs are kind of similar in a way. They even have a dolphin chair, it's called, where the client can be totally horizontal, so it's actually more comfortable, but it does have a little bit more gadgets, so it just takes a little while to get comfortable adjusting it. Then. So again, just move up and down. And another one, you can actually unscrew this, and you can actually move it back or forth with this area. But just make sure this is not right at the person's knees, because if it's right at the person's knee when they get in there, it's going to kind of jab their knee region. So it's not going to feel good for them. And then this, this one, this chair doesn't adjust at all, but when you fold it up, that's what you're going to do with this. You're going to actually kind of buckle it under and bring it down then. Okay, so what I want is I want the client to actually get on the chair. So I've shown her how to get on the chair, so just make sure both knees are on there. It's kind of like a motorcycle in a way too. And then what you want is, once they're on the chair, then you can do some adjustments with the chair region. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit. And you're not going to, it's not going to be right every single time. So that's why you might have to adjust a little bit for each person. Okay, let's have the rest down. And you can see here, it's not totally on the head area. So what I'm going to do is bring it a little bit forward. And then just ask them to just move around a little bit and see if it's comfortable for them. And with this hand thing, especially if they have any kind of carpal tunnel problems, you can just raise that up a little bit. Is that comfortable? Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of times chairs will actually come with a sternum pad, it's called. So the sternum pad um, for larger breasted women, you can actually go like this 
right in between, or it can go like this. So the breasts are coming over this region. Also a larger person, so their stomach um, is give a little bit of leeway right at the stomach region. But again, you can have it like this or like this. But usually with a chair, as you can see, it's Velcro here. So you can actually have them, when they get on the chair, they can actually just hold this. And when they're leaning forward, make sure it's comfortable for them. So you just don't want this like this because you want to be able to make sure it's more comfortable just lean forward. Um, pregnant women, um, I don't, especially the third trimester, probably stay away from the chair massage just because, again, you don't want to push too much on the abdominal area. So a lot of chair massage techniques are actually compression, so you're actually pushing down. So just make sure, um, like this, maybe in the second trimester, okay, but make sure you're not pushing a lot of pressure in the lower lumbar and the mid-back region for chair massage. So again, both different directions or you don't have to have it at all then um, for the chair massage. And also the headrest, for if you're going to massage somebody that's a little bit smaller, you can actually put a little bit more narrow or expand it for that area too. So if they do have a smaller head, um, just so their head won't actually fall through. And a big complaint that I've seen people when they're massaging is right here this bar um, sometimes their their chin is right up against that bar so always make sure you do a visual evaluation before you actually start massaging make sure their chin is not hitting that bar region so again with chair massage make sure you you do a once over um, just before you actually start the massage then so we're going to put this back on Put the regular sternum pad on and again I didn't lock this so make sure you actually lock everything first before you actually have them get on the chair then you can adjust everything you want okay we'll come over here and I explain to her how to get on the chair then so just make sure knees on there so again make sure the legs aren't straight and then just have them lean forward and put their head in the face rest you actually make face rest covers too you can actually purchase or disposable ones um, you can actually put over that region that's a little bit more comfortable. Some people actually use like a um, smooth hair net, they'll just actually put that over it. Um, I, I myself, in the way back in the day, I actually used two paper towels and just put it over that area too, so it's another way. Especially if you have a woman that has a lot of makeup, you know, with makeup it's really hard to actually get off the headrest. Um, that's a really, really bad thing for that. Okay, well some of the techniques, a lot of times um, people think of just kind of petrissage. Petrissage means more like kneading the shoulder region, so that's what a lot of people think massage is. Also, if people have seen a lot of um, karate movies, um, deportment it's called, kind of hitting, striking the body. So that's, again, that's what a lot of people think actual massage is. But it's so much more than that, so there's a lot of techniques that we're going to actually incorporate. Even though you can perform it on the table, you can actually perform them on a chair. It's a little bit harder to actually glide on the body, and it all depends on what kind of shirt they have. But I'll show you different kind of techniques for that, for those regions. So uh, with massage, you don't want to go into massage right away. You might want to just hold your hands there for a little bit, build up a kind of a trust um, with the client as much as you can. And you want to make sure that you use good body mechanics uh, during the chair massage. One of the biggest things I've seen uh, with therapists out in the field, out in public, giving chair massage is their facial expressions. So if they're actually holding their breath a little bit or actually glaring or something, um, just be aware how other people perceive you. So that's why I try to put a smile on your face. Not too much of a smile, but enough of a smile. Make sure you look like you're enjoying yourself as much as you can. So again, Shoulder area, that's where most people actually start with the chair massage area. And you can do circular friction with the thumb area, as you can see here. But again, with both hands, you want to try to keep both hands on the body as much as you can. Okay, techniques that are more shiatsu like, um, that's why some people call it um, shiatsu um, chair massage or Japanese chair massage. So, what we're going to do is actually compress with our thumbs along the side of the spine, not on the spine, but the side of the spine. 
And the areas to be aware of for endangerment is the vertebrae here. Make sure you don't put any pressure right on the vertebrae. Um, also the kidney regions, especially the floating ribs and just below that, you don't want to put any pressure on there because you can actually bruise the kidneys and they can actually urinate blood. So that's why in, in boxing they say no kidney punch, so don't be putting a lot of pressure in that area. And if you are, you can kind of push into the vertebrae but not onto the vertebrae when we get into those regions. Also any bony landmarks, make sure you don't put a lot of pressure on those. You're more likely to bruise any bony areas. Okay, so again, we're just compressing for a few seconds, come out for a few seconds. Compressing for a few seconds, out for a few seconds. Or you can go even for more. So one, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, then out slowly. So go in for a few seconds, out for a few seconds. Or again, you can go for even longer periods of time too. So watch your reactions too when you're massaging. Make sure it's not too much pressure. If you see them kind of moving around a little bit, um, it's going to be um, it's too tender for them. But when you're working on the sides of the body, that can be too ticklish. So you might have to use more of your palm area when you're massaging those regions. Another one, you can actually kind of walk the body with your thumbs. But just make sure, again, that you don't burn yourself out with your thumbs. Because so many people overuse their thumbs. But the problem is, the thumbs, that's where you can actually feel things the most. Then. And you can mix it up. You can perform slower techniques. And speed it up a little bit, too. Okay, let's walk the body with the palm. And try not to hyperextend the wrist. Make sure you're kind of lean, leaning in. And you're kind of lunging into the body, too. So you just walk the body in different areas. You can also perform a little vibration, a little circular friction even right on the spine, but I'm not using really any pressure on the spine, just kind of cupping the spine. Some people will do a circular friction, kind of warm up the back. So before you use any deeper work, you always want to make sure that area is warmed up as much as possible. So I always perform a little bit lighter techniques to start with, and then get a little bit deeper. And again, watch your reactions. Fingers are a big area where they're going to tense up if it's too much pressure. Okay, next one, where we actually use our knuckles. You can press. Again, you can go up and down the side of the spine, right in the rector muscles. But again, make sure you know where the vertebrae is. So you can even have your hand just kind of guiding, just make sure you're not pushing anything on the vertebrae then. And with chair massage, a lot of times you want to do a, a verbal um, kind of health form. So ask them what kind of um, complications or problems they have. A lot of people are actually having them fill out a, kind of a small health form too. Because you just no, never know um, what kind of ailments or problems people have. Because even though the average person thinks that it's, oh, it's no big deal, it's just massage, there's actually a lot of contraindications with massage, so that's why it's always good to actually read up on those two. And as you can see, that I'm actually guiding my hand just to make sure I'm not pushing on the vertebrae at all. You can also rotate your knuckles too. You can also perform both at the same time or opposite. Okay, next one, right on the vertebrae. I'm just going to kind of twist, but again, not putting a lot of pressure on the vertebrae. It's more the muscles on the side. I'm kind of cupping and kind of twisting. Okay, next one we're going to do is actually interlock like this and actually use more of the heel of my palm, especially in the lumbar region. It's called the quadrus laborum. And the thing is, I'm not pushing straight down. Again, that's an endangerment for your kidneys. 
So I'm just actually pushing into the vertebrae basically, but not on the vertebrae. So it's a good one for lower back problems. Okay, next one, you can feel the iliac crest here, the hip bone. Just walk up, but you're just performing a little bit of a stretch. So more cross-handed stretch. Or you can actually perform a little bit of a stretch too. So what you can do is actually just lift it up a little bit. So in the cup, and give a little stretch. So you're almost getting into like a myofascial release. But then you're not going to give, it's not going to give it all. It's not going to um, hurt the shirt at all just because you bunched it up in the center a little bit. Okay, for the lower back, you can also like circular friction. Again, I'm not pushing straight down, I'm kind of squeezing. And again, that's where a lot of people actually have low back pain, especially guys. And you'll notice too if they're, they're actually sitting on a wallet. Okay, next one, you can kind of separate. And again, it all depends on what kind of shirt they have. So some of them you might be able to glide a little bit, other ones you can't. Okay, the next one, then use your elbow, compress, and then use the forearm. And again, beware of what you look like when you're in public. That's a big overlooked th thing that a lot of people don't, are not aware of. And again, you can go really slow. You can even do a little twist with the elbow. They want a little bit more pressure. The nice thing about chair massage, a lot of times they're not going to really doze off, so you can communicate a little bit more. Especially if it's in a mall, I mean, there's a lot of people talking. And the best way to get clients is actually have a client on the chair. So that's why um, sometimes they even offered five minute free chair massage and a dollar minute after that, just to get somebody on the chair. So more likely when somebody sees somebody on the chair, they say, oh, that feels good. So you're more likely to have somebody do that though. Okay, next one, we're going to push into the rector muscle, the muscles, the ones along the side of the spine. And again, whatever you perform on one side, you want to make sure you perform it on the other side too. So at least three times for each technique. So let's say they really liked it, but you only performed it once. They might feel a little bit chipped, so make sure you, you actually go to the other side, perform the same technique. But again, for this video, I'm just showing the technique so you want to make sure you even out on both sides as much as possible. Okay, next one, you can actually have interlock like this. Relax the bottom fingers. So you can actually compress a little bit too that way. And again, chair massage, it's a lot of compression that you're using. Or you can have your hand on top like a cross or your hand like this. So whatever feels more comfortable, but again, don't hyperextend. Make sure you're kind of lunging, performing chair massage. Or you can cross it like this, compressing. And sometimes to get a little bit more stable, you can actually put your foot on the bottom of the, the leg and actually hold it down. Um, just so it, if you think it's moving around a little bit. Okay, next one. If you're gonna ever use your elbow, just make sure your wrist is relaxed, just compressing on the body. And again, you can just hang out in the area and just performing more generalized techniques throughout the body, but you can concentrate on certain problem areas if they have any. And you can just hold it there too, so you can actually incorporate, if you know a trigger point therapy, you can actually incorporate the deeper stuff into the actual chair. So the options are endless basically with performing chair massage. Okay, next one, you can actually perform more of a glide. And I prefer to glide downwards, just so the shirt won't go up, so it's a little bit more comfortable. And you will get um, people every now and then, especially the people that wear more hip hiker, and it's actually, you, you'll, you'll be able to see their underwear. So it's a good idea to actually maybe even bring um, a few towels with, so you can actually just tuck it in, because you don't want um, the public to actually see that when you're actually massaging. 
So uh, just make sure you might bring a few towels with and just ask them if you want to um, kind of hook it in there and maybe have them do that too then. And the problem is some people will actually wear a dress. So with the dress, um, you might have to pull, put a towel over the pelvic region when they're sitting in this position just so nothing gets exposed then. So it's just a little bit of words of advice. Okay, so then you can also kind of friction if you're going to perform any kind of gliding. But again, it's kind of considered heat friction because it's bringing up the heat in those regions. And again, more of the heel of your palm, more circular friction just with one. Okay, next one with the fingertips, heel and palm, okay. Or you can actually go heel your palm, palm, fingers. So you, again, like we were walking before, but this is, you can actually kind of dig in with your fingertips. And just make sure you're not tensing up um, with the techniques. So if you are, you got to alter and moderate them. Okay, next one, I'm going to actually hold the shoulder region and the lower body, I'm going to do a little rock, then, okay? Or you can actually hold the lower body, you can rock down if you want, or rock up. So those lighter techniques, try not to use those to start with, especially if they could be a little bit tender. And again, right around here, that's where they can be a little bit more um, ticklish too, so you can use a little bit more palm in those areas. And you can even get on your knees a little bit, okay? And right below the iliac crest right here, the gluteus medius, that's a big one for lower back problems. So you can just use the heel of your palm. But in public, you don't want to actually have your hands out like this and actually grabbing the glutes. So always use more of the heel of your palm or your knuckles in this area. But again, that's where people are going to have a lot of problems that they're going to have lower back because it actually refers to the low back region. Also the quadriceborum. But again, I'm not pushing straight down. I'm actually pushing more in. So you can actually kind of pull the hip and kind of push into the quadriceborum that way too so you're getting a little bit of resistance with that area. Some people will actually incorporate the legs into it. Um, with the legs, you just have them extend one leg. Um, I'll show you a little bit, a little bit of that later. Then, so it's just different options. Okay, let's go over some Tapultman techniques. So we showed you like this. Just make sure when Tapultman, your wrist is always relaxed. You're less likely to injure yourself. You're less likely to injure the client too. So back and forth. Okay, again, not on the vertebrae, not any bony areas. This is a great area to actually perform the deportment. You can use more of your knuckles, just make sure it's kind of relaxed. Or a thing called quacking, like this. Next with the knuckles. Next one, let's go back and forth. Next one, just with the pads of your fingertips. Not the whole hand because that's going to get a little sting. More of a loose fist beating, make sure it's not totally tight, like this, which you're going to use on the side of your hand. So it's kind of like the hacking like this. Another one is called pincement. What we're going to actually do is we're actually grab, pinch. 
And this is if they want um, a little bit more stimulation. So especially if they have to go right back to work, you can ask them and wake them up. Otherwise, you can do it at the same time. Also, this wakes them up too, just back and forth heat friction. Again, I'm going right over the spine or the sides, but not a lot of pressure. It's just enough to wake them up a little bit. You can do, after that, you can just kind of more of a relaxing technique, especially straighten out the, the shirt. This one person I was giving a chair massage to, um, when I was massaging her, she had a sweater on and it actually started to peel a little bit. But, and I actually told her that it's kind of shedding a little bit. But she actually let, um, let me know that, oh, it's no big deal. But by the end of the 20 minutes I was massaging her, there was a whole bunch of sweater on the floor then. But just make sure you're aware of those kind of things. If somebody has a silk shirt, those work out really nice. Just because you can actually glide on that a lot easier. So you can actually perform more gliding techniques, even like the figure eight. Just like on the table, it's a little bit harder like this, but you can still perform it. Or you can actually just glide down. And with the chair, try not to be right in front of them like this. Maybe be off the side a little bit, just for obvious reasons. In the shoulder and get this area too. But with more gliding, you can actually just glide across, more like an ocean wave back and forth. And when you go on the other side, just make sure you still keep contact. So you don't want to go like this, do like a ballerina, go to the other side. So make sure again that you're having more of a contact when you're going around to the other side. Okay, with the gliding, you can actually have hand on top. And again, the back is centrally located, so you don't have to go one direction with the back. That's what's nice about it. So with the arms and legs, try to go more pressure towards the heart, less pressure away. But with the back, again, it's centrally located, so go whatever direction you want then. Okay, so also heat circular friction along the sides. You can also kind of squeeze the sides too. So remember again, before we kind of squeeze, kind of pushing into the vertebrae a little bit, but now you can kind of squeeze the side of the body too. So you get more of the lats, external obliques. Okay, a nice one for pressure wise, you're just gonna lay your whole hand down here. Only pressure on the thumb area. Compress, push down, compress, push down, but this hand here, there's no pressure at all. This is the hand that's actually adding the pressure, and again, you want to actually use your body mechanics to get more pressure that way then. And you can even stay in area too, so if you're going to perform anything like trigger point therapy. And another word of advice too, you even want to ask them, do you have any bruises anywhere that I can't see that are covered by clothes? Also, any kind of surgeries. Um, you might um, feel calcium deposits in the body. Um, any lumps, um, make sure you're not massaging them. But even, um, just point it out afterwards, did you know you had this area um, down here? And the main thing is with that is just explain to them, if it ever gets bigger, have them get checked out by a doctor. Never say anything about cancer, of course. That's, um, the C word is a bad thing to say during massage. So just have them actually get it checked out by a doctor, any kind of things like that. And then the, the tips of your fingers, you can kind of circular friction. You can also both at the same time or opposite. Okay, with the shoulder region, you can kind of right on the scapula the infraspinatus region, you can actually do a circular friction right on there because it's not as bony as the border over here though. So if they have rotator cuff problems, you name it, it's more circular friction. They can also interlock and compress 
but just make sure your body mechanics down like this, compressing. And kind of lean in if you need more more pressure then. So it's not you're leaning down like this. Make sure you're just kind of leaning your whole body, kind of like lunging. Okay, for the neck area, you can actually just pull their hair up a little bit. And if you need to, actually hold the headrest over here. And you can actually, as you can see here, I'm actually like circular friction right underneath the suboccipital ridge. Again, that's a big area for headaches. So make sure you're aware of that area. So it's actually called the suboccipital muscles. It's a group of four. But that actually wraps around the, kind of like eyeglasses for the referral when they ever somebody has kind of headaches. So. And I always ask permission whether it's okay to mess up their hair in a chair massage, especially um, if they have to go right back to work. So it all depends. So with the chair, um, w when you're massaging, you can actually use circular friction on the scalp. And if you want a little bit more pressure, actually hold on to the headrest. Go around. You need to go through the hair like this. Again, you can slow techniques down, speed them up. Everybody's going to be different. Okay, next one. Kind of squeeze. Or, again, you can actually hold on and kind of squeeze. And some people actually will kind of fast circular friction. There's a treatment called Indian head massage, where for about 20 to 30 minutes, that's all they're concentrating on is head, neck, shoulder, scalp region. So they're actually using a lot of those techniques um, in these regions. Okay, so again, I always ask permission whether it's okay to actually mess up their hair or not. Um, but some people will actually um, be basically shaved and you can actually ask them do you want me to use a little lotion on your scalp so that usually feels good but just always don't assume always ask just to make sure that okay for more of the shoulder region you can get kind of circular friction or the heel of your palm Or you can actually kind of pull, you're going to pull this way and push this way, but not, again, onto the spine, more into the rectors, the rope of band muscles there. You can kind of rock back and forth with your fingertips. Or again, like your knuckles, like we previously did a while ago. You can kind of rock it like this, your knuckles. But again, be aware of their bo um, body, how it's reacting for the massage. So if their fingers are kind of tensing up, or if they're holding their breath, or they're moving around a little bit, ask them, is the pressure too much? Are you ticklish? So again, it's all about the client. It's not about yourself as much. They're the ones that's paying the bills. Okay, you can either use one knuckle if you want, just go back and forth, or just actually hold an area. And some people will kind of just kind of push and rock into a certain area too, okay? Okay, shoulder region, I mean, that's a hard area to get at, but more circular friction right around the rhomboid area, but not on the border there, the scapula. But that's where people are going to, it usually feels the best then.
Okay. Other, let's go back to some of the techniques for the back area. So with this, you can actually go side, or you can go both. You can even glide with your form a little bit, but just make sure your hand, wrist is relaxed. You can even go right around the iliac crest area. Okay, if you need to get down on your knees a little bit, be aware of your body mechanics. So this is such a low area, you're either going to have to lunge a lot or get on your knees. So it'd be nice in reality to actually have a little bit of a carpet, so it'll be a little bit more comfortable for yourself. But some people, some people actually bring a little bit, uh, a little chair. So you can actually sit down every now and then, especially when you're working on the hands and the forearms and the arms. Okay, you can also kind of circle out at the back. Also you can kind of alter. Some people will kind of like a wave going out like this or they'll alternate back and forth or one side next side one side next side but again a lot of the chair massage it's more compression on the body but if you want to incorporate these more gliding techniques so again it all depends on what kind of shirt they're actually wearing and um, some places of massage you know, people are actually like in their swimming suits, so especially guys, I mean if they just have swimming trunks, um, you can actually just ask is it okay if I use some lotion or something on the body. So if they're going to go right on the sun afterwards, try not to use oil because they're more likely to burn of course. So that's a bad thing. Um, even for women when they're um, having their swimming suits too, um, ask permission you want to use some lotion on your back and it's going to be a little bit easier. So it's almost like a table massage but with on the chair though. Okay, next one. You can actually kind of make like a triangle, go down, triangle, go down, or you can go one hip to the opposite shoulder, and then just mix it up. You can kind of go around a whole circle in the back too. Or we can go the opposite direction. You can even use the back of your hand if you want, especially like a finishing technique. Or even the tips of your fingers. Or even kind of like a feather back and forth. Or you can kind of alter it back and forth like this too. Okay, some of the stretching techniques, even massage techniques for the neck area, you can actually have them sit up so it's a little bit more comfortable. So what you're going to do is ask permission to actually place your palm on the forehead and you can actually, right underneath the subaccipital ridge, again that's a big area for headaches, and get into there. And again, watch your reactions, make sure it's not too much. And you can even massage the shoulders in this position too. Works really nice. You can kind of separate the traps here. You can also use your forearms, kind of lean down, kind of stretch out the shoulders. Next one, you can actually kind of cup, just bring it back. Especially if people are ro internally rotated with their shoulder when it's rotating like this. So that's why you're going to go like this, bring it back. Okay, cross the hand. Again, like that. But whatever side you perform it on, make sure you perform it on the other side too. But with stretching, slow in, maintain it, slow out. It's usually 10, 20, 30 seconds you can hold a stretch. All depends on what they want. 
in those areas. And they can also kind of rotate the head too a little bit and compress the opposite side so you can either like this rotate a little bit just again slowly so I'll show you this way just rotate a little bit so just a little bit different stretch stretching out the sternocleidomastoids, galenes, levator scapula all those areas you can also kind of pull the shoulder back and this forward to get more of the neck get the, more of the levator scapula, the traps okay next one you're going to place your hand here push and pull back Okay, next one you're going to kind of hook your thumbs right underneath the suboccipital ridge. You can give them a little pull up if you need. But again, watch your reactions. And you can even massage with your thumbs in that area too. Okay, another stretch. You can actually have them place their hand behind their head. This hand right in the rhomboid trap region. You can just do a stretch that way. Or you can have both hands, inter have them interlock their fingers behind their head. Use more of your hip. Just kind of pull back like this, then, okay? Okay, next one. More of the bicep stretch. Like this. Or you can place your hand behind here. And get more of the deltoid stretch. So you're going to bring it this way then. Or some people will actually use both. A squeeze, or you can bring it up a little bit more for a stretch. But again, just be aware of their body mechanics, those areas. So you can incorporate some stretching into the chair massage. So it all depends on, um, again, what they actually prefer. And you can also do kind of a twist. So what we're going to do is this shoulder here. I'm going to pull it this way. And this one, I'm going to push this way. So that gets more on the side of the body, also the vertebrae too. And again, whatever whatever you perform on one side, perform it on the other side too to kind of even it out. So with the stretching, you want to talk with them a little bit more compared to the actual massage, just so they're more aware of it then. So those are some stretching techniques, and now I'll get to the arm and the hand area. So you can even use lotion in those regions too. Okay, now we're to the arm and hand region. Some people actually sit down while performing this, some will actually stand up. So it all depends on your preference with this. So with the hand and the arm, you can actually squeeze. Some people actually use lotion on there. Try not to use oil because they're going to be going right back to work usually. Especially if they're out in the sun, again, you don't want any oil on them. They're more likely to burn in those areas. So you can also squeeze, going up. But again, with any kind of gliding techniques, try to use more pressure towards, less pressure away. But with chair massage, a lot of times you're, it's going to hard to glide with a lot of pressure in this kind of position. So again, it's more compression. You can also, just with your thumb, compress up the arm. Also right in the pec area. You can also use both hands. Kind of squeeze. You can also interlock your fingers, compress. And with the arm, you can just kind of rock it around a little bit to see if they're actually holding patterns at all. Again, some people are going to perform a little bit faster techniques, other ones a little bit slower techniques, so it all depends. If you have any lotion or oil, you can actually massage up, massage down a little bit, a little bit lighter going down. And then around, right around the wrist area, a little, a little circular friction. Also kind of separate. You can also separate more of the forearm region too. 
Some people even a little snake bite, but if you have lotion, it actually feels really good with the snake bite. You can go back and forth with a little friction. Let's go with the finger region. With the fingers, you can actually friction off, or you can glide off. You can kind of glide and kind of flick, a little bit more stimulating, or kind of rotate, glide off, or just stay in one area, kind of rotate it. But again, each finger you want to perform this on, though, just so, again, so it evens it out. Then back and forth, a little bit of friction. Kind of squeeze the palm area. You can actually interlock your fingers with theirs. Extend the wrist that way. Or you can flex the wrist. An even better stretch for the flexion is actually hold the forearm region, palm, traction, and then stretch it. You can get a little bit better stretch in that region. So that you can also, with the finger or the thumb, kind of bring it up, or you can interlock, do a little stretch that way too. This is the one most people love. You actually interlock right here, right in between their ring finger, little finger. Then also your pinky between their index and their thumb. Go like this. You kind of separate with the palm. And again, if you have any lotion, it usually works really nice, a little slide. But it's hard to get that friction though for the hands. You can also interlock the fingers so you can actually massage more of the palm. flex the fingers or you can extend the fingers or you can abduct the fingers or even abduct the thumb and the fingers use a little bit of knuckle or in the palm and also a little shimmy right at the ulna in the radius region back and forth also you can just rock it around a little bit and you can actually pull the wrist and push the forearm do a little stretch there right in the carpal region also a little bit of circular friction right around the carpals or just be aware of the median nerve here, just actually separate. With no pressure right on the median nerve, of course. So there's a form, it's actually called reflexology, that everything in your hand relates to everything in your body. So a left hand, left side of the body, right hand, right side of the body. So there's around 500 nerve endings in each hand that relates to everything in your body. But again, um, it's more of a theory, but some people still believe in it. So you can actually just compress the hand too. I'm just going to squeeze. Or you can actually just with your thumb just compress in areas in the palm area. So especially like with palmar fasciitis, a little bit tight in the palm region, especially if you're going to be working in an office setting, people are at the computer desk all day long, the shoulders, hands, forearms, those are areas you're going to be concentrating on a lot. So whatever you perform on one side, you want to make sure you perform on the other side. But usually in general, in a um, chair massage, 10, 15 minutes, you're usually not going to incorporate the hands and the arms. But again, it's always nice to ask them, what areas do you want to concentrate You've got 15 minutes, let's break it down. You want five minutes here, five minutes here, five minutes here. Or do you just want all 15 minutes just in the, your problem area? So the more you can communicate with your client, the more likely they'll come back to you too. That's the main thing. So again, it's nice to have a routine, but you got to be able to branch 
out and above that because the clients are going to want um, certain areas concentrated on it. So it's just not all about a routine. And with chair massage, you can actually have a watch too on yourself because the thing is you're not going to be gliding much with your um, forearm. With the techniques, you can actually kind of have an idea of the time. Because a lot of times they're not going to have, actually have a, um, a watch around or a clock around. And for cleaning the chair, usually you can just use um, like soap and water. So about 20 or 30 squirts um, of soap and I think water, so a spray bottle. So you can spray down the chair each time, make sure you do that. And some people add a little bit of bleach in there too. But be aware of bleach, make sure um, the chair is totally dried off after you clean it off. Just to make sure because um, if it's not, it's, if the um, bleach gets on their clothes, uh, that's not a good idea. Then. Okay, so that's what the arm, hand, um, shoulder area they can incorporate. So again, you can actually have, you can actually stand up too. So you can incorporate some of those or you can actually kneel down or you can have a little chair. You can also back and forth. But again, it's a lot of compression if you don't have any oil or lotion. That's what you're going to be, be performing. So that's why, again, people call it um, Japanese chair massage or shiatsu chair massage because that's a lot of techniques they're using with shiatsu. It's a lot of compression throughout the whole body. And if you really want to get skilled at it, it would be a good idea to actually learn some of the acupressure points and what they're good for too. But that's a totally different language, basically. Um, it's really hard for the average person. So it takes a long time to actually study it and also to totally understand it. So the more Western knowledge you have, it's harder to get that Eastern knowledge into your head then. Okay, so that's for that area. Let me move to the leg region. Some people actually incorporate the legs into the treatment. Um, not many people do, but it's just a different option that you can incorporate. And with this, you want to make sure that you're not too close to the groin region um, when you're massaging, especially out in public. And um, you can actually incorporate a lot, even down to the foot region. So with the foot, you can actually have them extend and actually kind of rest that underneath only if they're flexible enough. But the average person probably isn't, so you can actually massage more of the tibialis anterior region and the peroneus area right all, all along here. And you can even get into the lateral side of the leg too. But one leg you want bent, the other one straight, just so they don't slide into the chair. That's the main thing. So they're just stabilizing their cells a little bit that way. And the gastronemia soleus region, kind of separate. And depends on what kind of clothes you can actually perform a little gliding that leg too. You can even perform a little rock with the leg. And in the gluteal region, again, you remember how we got more of the heel of the palm? You can actually use your knuckle here, or you can use more of your heel of your palm along the side of the leg. So sometimes people actually cramp up a little bit in uh, this chair massage position. So that's why they might need to extend their leg a little bit. So you might have to perform a little bit of massage right in that area. So again, it's just different options. Um, it all depends. Let me show you some anterior techniques. Um,